Welcome to the World of Art with Paul Creamy. We're going to do a little bit something different today. We're going to talk about transferring images from a print onto wood. It took me eight years to get this to work, and it's been 18 years since I've done it again. So I'm going to show you some of the older ones that I did, and then I'm going to show you some of the newer ones, and you'll see the difference. So this is a photo transfer of Italy. What I do is I take a photograph, I give it to a person who flips the photograph, blows it up, and then I put a chemical on the wood and I run it through the press. And it's 2,000 pound press behind me. We're going to do that today in another segment after this one. But so I've got these beautiful old transfers. At the time I thought they were fabulous, but as I've gotten a little older, now this is 18 years later, these were done 18 years ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the older ones, and I'm going to show you the newer ones, and you'll see why I'm so excited. So you get this one a bit later, and the one with the studio with the pot and the flowers. So we'll get these off, and I'll put up two new ones. And so we'll try to get through this. In fact, Kevin loved this one, so I told him he could have it, because Kevin's the best. And he's my cameraman and production man and every kind of man. So you see that some of it works and some of it doesn't. Some of it's got some beautiful play. Uh, this happens to be Maine. This happens to be my studio. And I love doing this. It's a whole other world. Like I said, it took me eight years. And then I was giving up and I had this dream. Wallace Nutting came to me, a turn of the century photographer and minister. And he said to me, do this, do that. Three o'clock in the morning, I got up and went to the studio. Three days later, my wife called me and says, are you ever going to come home? What's going on? And I said, Mary Ellen, I finally got some idea of how to do this photo transfer onto wood. And I was like a kid in a candy store. I went out and bought tons of this wood and had a friend of mine cut it up and I started making these copies and they're copies from the photographs that I take uh, of my paintings. That happens to be one of my paintings. And uh, I take the photograph, I flip it, I put a chemical on the wood. I'm going to show you that later. And then I run it through the press with a lot of pressure and I get this image. And I think they're beautiful. And I have sold a ton of them and I still have a ton of them. I have been so busy in my life with so many different things. The trouble with having four kids, trying to get them to do what they're supposed to do, run a beauty parlor, or two beauty parlors with 20 hairstylists, go to college for two years. I was a little busy, but I still had a passion for doing this stuff. I have a cabinet that probably has 400 of these prints. I only grabbed a few just to show you this is a friend of mine's living room, and this is my studio. And I took photographs of everything. I probably have, I don't know, maybe three or 4,000 photographs. I have them everywhere. In fact, my friend who's developing my photographs and stuff says, Paul, you're quite a photographer. And I said, well, I've won a few awards. But this particular man is a fabulous photographer. And his photography has won major awards. I don't like to put my photography in shows because I do printmaking, watercolors, painting, sculpture. So I do so much stuff. And people say, you win so many awards. You don't give anybody else a chance. That kind of makes you feel bad. But So I, I do this for me because I love what I'm doing here. This is a, a house in Pembroke. This is my friend's backyard in Situate. I go around with my camera and I take pictures constantly. I got my camera in my glove box and I'm forever stopping and t talking to people and saying, can I take a picture of your garden? Do you mind if I take a picture of your garden? And they'll say, absolutely not. And I give them a little card and tell them to watch my TV show on YouTube, Paul Creamy Fine Art. So this happens to be, Martha, uh, uh, I think it's Nantucket, Nantucket, that one. And this one was somewhere, I don't know, maybe California or Mexico. I take pictures from all over the place. There's so much of them, I forget where they are most of the time. And when I look at them, I get reminded. 
I'm sort of moving along here. My favorite series of pictures happens to be Camden, Maine. I did a whole series of these gorgeous schooners. I was standing on this place, and I'm saying to God, God, where are the schooners? And three minutes later, the schooners started going by. I have my camera in my hand, and I'm taking pictures of these schooners. This is a picture of um, Canada, Maine, the harbor, where the boat is moored. Some of them don't come out as good as I want them to come out. I can't do anything about it. The, the process is what the process is. But some of them come out pretty nice. Like this one here had all kinds of stuff going on, but I still love it. It's a newer one. It's not as good as the, what I did today, but I'm looking for the perfect process. The right amount of chemicals, the right amount of prints, and everything works on the press. The right amount of pressure. I have to stand on the wheel sometimes to get these through the machine. This machine is all hand-driven, 2,000-pound etching press. So, I mean, you can see I missed a little corner here and a little thing there, but I don't mind that because it shows that it's what it's on. It's on wood, and it's got this feeling. It's beautiful. Love this particular one. Out of, and these two are newer. This is an older one. It just happens to be Nantucket again. This boat was stuck on the side when we got off the boat. And I said, oh, I like that. I wouldn't mind doing a painting of that. And I took a photograph and I did this print. So we've gone through the older stuff. Now we're going to go through the newer stuff. Now, and I don't mean to be going fast. If I'm going fast, I'll slow down. This is the newer stuff now. I want the wood to show. So I used a piece of wood that had all the grain at the top. So it looks like the sky. This is a harbor in Maine, and it was absolutely beautiful. I'd like to have it come out a little stronger, so I gave the people that are doing the new prints on the paper, and uh, they're going to be a lot better than this. So I'm dying to see what they're going to come out like. i got to call that guy and tell them how much I appreciate what I got today. So that's a newer one. This is recently. I think I did that last week. This is a newer one I did last week. This, I'm standing on this particular spot further down from the lighthouse. And I turn around and I see this schooner going by the lighthouse and I take a picture. And of course, when you take a picture, it's gorgeous. But this particular picture has to be flipped. It has to be backwards because when I print it, it goes back to the original state. A lot of people don't understand about printmaking and printing. Everything a printmaker does is done backwards. If you do something with a tool and you scratch a plate, it has to be backwards. That's what drives printmakers crazy. My older daughter hated doing it. She said it was such laborious to do. And I used to say to her, yeah, but the outcome is fabulous. You get a beautiful image. Here's another one of the newer ones. You can see how the boat is really jumping off in the sky from the wood, in the foreground with the rocks. I'm thrilled with what's going on with these. That's why I went and got this new guy today. I wanted to get this kind of an image. And I, I know once I show these images, the people are going to love them. You know? So I'm down to this, and then this is one that was an older one. I never showed it because it had a little knot right here. And I said, you know something, I'm not going to get frustrated by that little knot. So you know what I did? I took some car uh, paint, some acrylics, and I painted that little knot, little greenish blue. And it goes in the painting, and nobody's going to know it, except for me telling you. But I, I really like that. I love the flowers, the, the hop poppies. I, that's a friend of mine's garden. I cut her hair for 25 years, and she used to say to me, come see my garden, Paul. Come see my garden. And I finally went, and I almost started to cry. I said, oh, my God. The garden was breathtaking. So let me show you something. This is what happens when it's not right. See, I went to my photographer friend yesterday or the day before, 
And I said, you've got to see if you've got something that will make this work. It didn't work. So I went to a different guy today, and this guy today have these photos right here that are mine. I'm going to put this over here, and I'm going to grab one of the new ones that I just took today. This is the photograph. I'll show you. That's the photograph, which I'm going to do in the second stage of this TV show. And this is the print. And when I got this today, I must have jumped five feet up in the air. I'm saying to myself, I am finding the image that I want. I had to wait 18 years, but you know, waiting is not the problem. It's doing this the problem. I have to do what I know I can do, and it has to be a certain way. And so this particular thing works, and I'm thrilled. And I'm going to do the print in the next second or two, maybe three minutes. I'm going to set it up, and then I'm going to come back and do the print. I'm going to cut the paper. I'm going to measure it against the wood. I'm going to put the wood on the press. I'm going to put the image on top of it. I'm going to run it through the press. And then we're going to peel it off and see how it comes out. Thank you. And we'll be right back. This is the magic chemical that I use to transfer the, the photograph. So I spray it pretty well because it's super hot in here. In fact, I tried doing this last week. It was so hot, I couldn't get to the print before it would disappear on me. So then I take the photograph that's cut into the size of the wood, I put it on top, I take it and I put it on the etching press, I put this piece of cardboard on top. This thing probably, I don't know how many pounds, but I'll tell you, some days it's so hard for me to turn, I have to stand on the wheel. At 77, it's it getting a little tough. That's what I told the guy that I'm doing buying all these prints from with the paper, that doing this takes a lot of effort and a lot of stress. And then I roll it through the press. So we pull it through the press and it really goes through really quiet and slow and it's nice and it's not too heavy. It's going to be perfect. We'll go take off the blankets and take a look and see how great the print is. I've been doing this for a long time. I bought a etcher press like this in 1973 when I bought my house and <laughs> they came and they put the thing together down in the basement piece by piece. So this is what the print looks like when it's gone through the press. You can see, I'll, break, I'll come around and I'll stand on the other side, I'll get a little closer. You can see the quality of the print is so dynamically beautiful. I am really thrilled. In fact, I was so excited about this, I called the, the person that I had print my paper that I've had for the last 20 years and not been able to use because I couldn't find the right person. My oldest son knew this particular person in, in Taunton. His name's Tony, and Tony has a magnificent business. And he said, well, I think we can do this. And so he did a few of these prints for me, and I took them back to the studio, and I printed this, and you got to see it. God bless and goodbye, and have a good day.